part oh. two. Part two. <laughs> Coming to a screen near you soon. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to, while we're talking about customer sentiment, I'd love to hear your mm -hmm. thoughts on the, I guess this was a while ago now in internet months, but yeah, your take on Google's helpful content update. Oh, I love the helpful content update because it reinforces how important um, user behavior signals are. It was the first time that I've actually seen them write things like, um, uh, does the person who found your page have to search again to find the information that they're looking for? Right there, they said, you know, they've always said content links, content links, content links, right? That's that's how we rank pages. They never talk about the search behavior signals because they don't want people manipulating them. Yet there's hundreds of networks of thousands of individual users who are searching and clicking on things for a few pennies per click as a job, right? They're, they're in a mobile home somewhere, you know, and and watching TV and just clicking on things all day to, to, to make money. It's silly, but that's just what they do because they know they've figured out that search behavior signals are important. Uh, back in 2006, when I was trying to rank for SEO expert, right? it was a keyword I had to rank for. I got to the first page and my boss said Disney wasn't impressed. And I said, well, <laughs> I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna get people to search. And then anyone who clicked on my listing, I'm gonna say, hey, thank you. You just helped me move up in the search results. And, and it worked. I got to the top by people choosing me more than the competition. Um, you know, and I didn't know it was getting me blacklisted from the industry for being, you know, a <laughs> braggart for being number one for SEO experts. So thank God I got rid of that listing, but, <laughs> but it did feel good. It did feel good walking in with the boom box and everyone's like, what's up with Wiedemann? Oh, he just beat Brad Fallon for SEO expert. I'm like, get out the way, you know, ludicrous. It was amazing. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I finally got rid of it, but it was that user behavior signal that moved me up from that ninth position to the first position by mm -hmm. people who were searching, clicking, and choosing me as the final destination, you know, of, the, right. of their query. So when we when we think about things like this helpful content update, they've said at least twice that in one way or another, that behavior signals are going to play a role in your keyword rankings. So now we can we can advocate for more rich results, more schema.org, more um, entity work where we take an entity and tie it into the, the schema of thing, whether it's about or mentioned so that Google knows explicitly when we use the word pancake, we're talking about wikipedia.org slash pancake. Right. So it gives us a little bit more power as SEOs, I think, to, to have uh, more knowledge graph related effort. It gives us more power to, um, to try to get more rich results instead of just a blue link and a black text uh, and black text in there. I, I think, I think it gives us a lot more, um, What's the word I want to use? Um, arsenal, you know, to go after better content. And it reinforces taxonomy. You know, when right. we think about wanting to rank for a broad keyword, like we said earlier, you can have a page or you can have a whole section of content. The The site with the section of content has all those great bread, breadcrumb links, you know, and internal links that are going back to that parent page that, that give that parent page more authority. Now you've got, uh, when Google's crawling your site, it says, hey, I found... Um, a lot of your links on your website pointing to these pages, these pages must be important because you're linking to them very often. Um, and by building a taxonomy and building a silo, you're basically making it really easy. The more pages, sub pages you create under that parent page, the higher that parent page is going to rank. So I, I think the helpful content update gives us a little more power to persuade clients who are on a flat taxonomy to organize their content more intuitively, to create more internal links through breadcrumb schema and so forth. So I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of the update because it does give us a lot more arsenal when clients kick back your ideas because they think right. they know SEO better than the company they're hiring to do their yeah. SEO. <laughs> Funny how that works. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely think it's great that Google, Google's moving towards being less coy, I guess I would say, yeah. being kind of more outright because obviously there are a lot of great seo experts around and they know kind of the ins and outs of this is what you do this is what you should, should yeah. prioritize when you're building your website when you're linking to pages when you're right. setting up your listings all of this and yeah a lot of people as you said unfortunately have sometimes have their own ideas so yeah when google's kind of forthright about this information that's you know already kind of universally known, I'll say. You no, know, <laughs> I just, I wish, I wish so. John Mueller's made it clear that he believes that they've disavowed a lot of websites altogether. 
as being not credible, not helping search rankings. And, um, and it's, it's a little frustrating to those of us who work really hard to do the right things. You know, my, my favorite quote is by Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn says, you don't have to do extraordinary things to be successful. You only have to do ordinary things extraordinarily well, which means every month improving the accuracy of our business data, improving the quality and helpfulness of our local pages, improving our business data of visibility and improving our online reputation. We're doing those things every month. We're building a pattern that Google is going to recognize as being a great, helpful result. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of the spammers and PBN networks and black hats out there, I was just at an event with a, a couple of folks that were black hat SEOs, and they were bragging about how great their black hat techniques are working now that Google's done some sort of, uh, where they've reverted a lot of the spam filters, and they can do a lot of old school, like three-way links and, and um uh, link wheels and web 2.0 linking from the 2000s and it's working all of a sudden like they mm -hmm. they somehow the different teams never passed on the history of of why they did things and they got rid of a lot of those filters and so it's it's creating a big mess of really useless content on the internet um, in an effort to try to game search results and what I'd encourage Google to do if, if Google ever listens to to any of my podcasts mm -hmm. is, is to really is to really get more team members involved in the spam filters and someone that we can email when we get an email from somebody that says hey i can i'm a, a you know a blog outreach person i've got these 100 websites that i can get you a post from and they're all domain authority 50 that i can just forward it to them and they can disavow mm -hmm. all of them and they'll literally discount them one thing that I've, I've complained about multiple times is how easy it is to game the search results for featured answers they're using really old school tools uh, right. article wizards and whatever to syndicate one little paragraph with an H2 across thousands of websites. And they're dominating these featured answers using spammy content syndication techniques instead of sharing through their social profiles into their audiences, you know, and, and maybe even through PR, they're, they're gaming the system by using old school SEO tools to blast the internet and WordPress, um, dot orgs and or WordPress.coms and, um, uh, blog spots and Weeblies and Wix sites and GoDaddy free sites, all using all these different um, crappy websites, Tumblr, right, to to create <laughs> content that nobody would ever go to in an effort to try to game the search results. And it's getting right. worse. So please, Google, if you're listening, get a team on this stuff. Contact me. I'll show you so many examples of it. Disavow all that garbage because it's not making it easy for those of us who are doing good things to help mm -hmm. our clients see great results. And at some point, sometimes our clients quit on the white hat and they end up going the black hat route. And then what's going to happen in a year or two? They're going to get penalized and have to start all over. So let's just let's just clean up the mess, honestly. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I feel like that's a common thing where it kind of becomes almost standard practice to use these, you know, like mm -hmm. black hat techniques and kind of try to yeah. game the system just because you can. But then Google a few years after will come up with these enhanced spam filters. Enhanced I hope they will. They've, they've gotten rid of a lot of them. Fingers it's, crossed. It's sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like they've recently kind of upped their game on, especially reviews and um yeah, I've, I've seen a ton of people. I sometimes browse the like Google My Business Reddit and a ton of people are complaining about their authentic reviews being taken yes. down or yeah. they're, they're like, oh, my friend bought me a they review. They did bring some back, I though. I didn't know. <laughs> some of the good ones did go away and some of them did come back. I think it was just yesterday I saw a post. I know it was uh, Matt Southern or Barry Schwartz who was talking about it, but it looks like mm -hmm. Google brought back a lot of the good reviews that went away. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that they're getting their act together on, on fixing that. I've, I've been fortunate enough to be able to work with um, uh, with Ben Fisher. And mm -hmm. Ben Fisher's done just an amazing job for our clients in doing two things. One, he has this assurance package that we love so that if, if a competitor tries to go in and change our business information, a suggested edit, for example, um, his team, his software flags it right away and reverts mm -hmm. it. And make sure that you know nothing changes. Okay. So that's that's part one. So that competitors can't screw up our listings. Part two is if a competitor is shoving keywords into their business name, or faking that they have a location using a virtual office, mm -hmm. um, his team will actually get it flagged and get it removed from the search results right away. So we've got two angles: one, getting rid of competitors who are doing spammy things, and protecting our site from competitors that just don't want to do um, ordinary things extraordinarily well. 
And, um, and that's been great. So kudos to Ben and, and his team for what they do to help our clients. And um, there needs to be more Ben Fishers out there. They really do need yeah. to be. Yeah, Ben is great. I actually just talked to him a few days ago for the podcast. So no way. He just <laughs> he just he just saw the the concert that I'm going to tomorrow. I'm seeing Elton John, and he just saw it. He's like, dude, I'm gonna tell you all about it. And I'm like, please don't. I want to be surprised. I want to enjoy it myself. <laughs> don't, don't so next week alerts. we're gonna talk about how great Elton John's concert was. Oh, and God. and he and I he and I hung out in Vegas two and a half weeks ago to see the Scorpions. Oh, so that was cool. Amazing. He's such a great guy. I love Ben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I had a great time talking to him he's so so knowledgeable obviously in this space yeah that's so funny i also i had no idea that elton john was still on his his <laughs> final tour right i feel like it's been no going worse on. this this is his second to last day his last day i believe is sunday and then he's going to europe and he's probably never going to perform in the u.s again his this is farewell farewell tour yeah so yeah we're if we would have gone sunday instead of saturday but i didn't know any better we literally would have saw his last concert in the states ever it's still fun. Oh, you saw the, you're seeing it's the It's going to be legendary. I'm so excited. I'm so yeah, excited. I love Elton John. Love him. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Um, yeah. I mean, okay. I just have one final question. What you got? Um, yeah. I mean, like, obviously we've talked about all these changes and how multi-location businesses kind of don't, if they use the right tools, they don't have to necessarily be so privy to all the changes because it's they manage it through the API. <laughs> that's but... why you have CRM. And that's why exactly. you use platforms to manage your business data. Yes. But for those who don't or for who are on the fence, how should they how should they, I guess, like get the new get the new Google News? How should they because I feel I feel like yeah. if you're not you're not ear to the ground, it's hard to it's very overwhelming um to kind of get all the information, find out. Sure. where to get the updates from because there's no so I do I do a lot of really guest speaking good, yeah. at the colleges and one one of the things that that I've always tried to help students who have a real passion for SEO uh, in doing is you know that my whole how do you become an SEO expert right and and stay abreast of everything the first thing you could do and I'll share this with you after the the podcast is mm -hmm. is um there's a site called Feedly F E E D L Y and I've got a a file that you could literally just import into your Feedly account and the way I have it organized is search engine news comes up number one. Um, so you see all different search engine news from search engine lands, search engine journal, search engine roundtable, all the sites that talk about what's going on. And it sorts it by the pages that are getting the most engagement and interaction and, and being talked about the most. So you see the important stuff first. Beyond that, I've got elite SEO, which is RSS feeds from the top SEOs in the industry that I really enjoy their content on. And then I've got segments, local SEO, conversion rate optimization. Um, I've got another one that's for e-commerce SEO. So depending on what your 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 niche is in search, you can use that Feedly OPML file, import it into your account, uh, and then reorganize it based on where your priorities are. But I would still encourage you to keep you know your your news focused on the news part first, and then the other blog post second. Next, I would create a, a Twitter list of all the top experts in that particular niche that you're in. Mine's just really? you know hashtag SEO experts in Twitter. If you can follow my my lists, find SEO expert in it. Um, and what's needed in that one is if you keep that tab open in your browser every you know hour or so, just toggle over there, hit refresh, and see what the top SEOs are talking about right now. That'll help you. If you're in local search and multi-location, the local search forum is amazing. Joy mm -hmm. Hawkins and um, you know all the all the gurus in local search, Darren Shaw, so they're all hanging out in there. And they're all giving great advice. So I, I really enjoy the local search forum. And you get this recap every week of, you know, what's happening and, and what's being talked about so that you don't have to go through every thread. You can see kind of the, the top posts in an email and pick and choose what you think is interesting to you. Um, right. The other thing that I would do too is participate in social media groups. There's there's a lot on Facebook. There's SEO Signals Lab, right? With Stephen King, he's, he's amazing. Um, Dumb SEO Questions is out there. Um, one of my favorite folks who used to participate in it, Bill Slavsky, passed away this year. So it's kind of sad when I toggle over there because I don't see him anymore. But but there's still a lot of really amazing people that will share, uh, you know, literally like veterans in SEO will share their best advice on how to handle a cer certain circumstance. So join those groups, participate, follow some of the streams, ask your questions. I have my own search marketers club as well. It's free. Oh, if you awesome. want to check it out, just, you know, just hit me up on social media, I'm SEO Steve anywhere and let me know, um, you know, who to add and I'll, I'll add all those people to that little club. 
um, you know, we've got, you know, Doc Sheldon's in there and, you know, some of my other, my other buds that love to, to live and breathe and talk search. So happy to, to introduce you to the crowd over there. Um, I also have podcasts, right? So if, if you're, uh, if you're following podcasts as, as you're growing up in your, your SEO career, uh, our little podcast is called Unbottleneck. I think we've had about a hundred um, podcasts or show so, so far. They're also on our website. Um, we've, we've interviewed, you know, Rand Fishkin and Neil Patel and, um, some other, you know, uh, SEO nerds that, that really, um, so fun. <laughs> love to share. So by all means, follow our podcast and, and other podcasts like the sign up podcast, um, uh, because you'll get a lot of really good input and feedback from, from people who've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I mean, I will definitely be, yeah, well, I'm not all, no, I'm not doing all of those. So I'll definitely be taking the advice. Yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like sometimes what might prevent people from kind of taking the steps to, implement SEO kind of delve into that realm with their business is just because it's it can be intimidating and it's hard to figure out where to start I could definitely relate to that <laughs> how do you eat so. an elephant right one bite at a time start start with uh you know a technical audit and strategy and get, get into um you know get into your competitive analysis see what the competitors are doing versus you um and then you want to do something with your off page and links um, then you want to get into uh, looking at uh, what your content roadmap looks like, those taxonomies. You know, when you when you take the time to pull, we had 185,000 keywords for Applebee's and it took us nearly six oh months God. to put together the <laughs> long-term content roadmap. But now we know every single way that somebody's going to be searching for what they offer and who they are um, so that there's enough Incredible. content for a lifetime of writers, you know? Yeah. Get awesome. that plan going. Put it in your project management system like Monday.com or Asana yeah. or Jira, whatever you happen to be using. Assign a tech person, a content writer, an off page, and maybe a local person if you're doing multi-location. And then every month meet and see how they're doing on hitting those KPIs. Awesome. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for all your advice. This was incredible. I learned so much <laughs> and I hope I know that our listeners did too, including perhaps Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah we um, love you Elon but you know <laughs> be nicer uh, <laughs> just a bit just a bit um yeah thank you so much Stephen um thank you so yeah, much for is... having me Alan. I, I definitely look forward to doing this again and maybe we can dig into a specific area next time like just reviews or just yeah. um local pages I have so much data and, and case studies to share share I think that'd be a lot of fun let me know yeah 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 for sure I was just like touching the touching the surface there's obviously so much more to talk about yeah i'd love i'd love to chat again i'll definitely be in touch anytime yeah okay awesome okay have a great rest of your day this has been thanks everyone thanks my line incredible yeah thank you okay i'll stop the re recording do i know how